What's going on everyone, Shiraz Ahmed here, and today I'm gonna to be giving you some tips about growing your wealth, much like you would with your garden, so stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, you know you're getting older when suddenly you wake up randomly and you genuinely get excited about plants and gardening. Now, I remember in the depth of COVID seeing this TikTok that said something to the tune that once guys turn 35, they get really into like golf, grilling, and or gardening. Now, sadly, I'm guilty of all of the above. So call me a stereotype here. So in honor of our growing appreciation for all things that our parents probably been trying to get us interested in for years, today we're gonna talk about growing your wealth with lessons straight from the garden. So let's get into it. All right, number one, which is to have a vision. Whenever the hosts walk into a completely dilapidated house on like a fixer upper type show and see this gorgeous modern farmhouse waiting to be unveiled, well, it's kind of like the vision that we're talking about here. So just like in their show, you'd need to envision on what you want your financial future to look like. Now for some that could be a cottage or on a beach, for others it could be like a bustling life in the city or the ability to indulge in that nice meal at your favorite restaurant without worrying about the bill. So your financial vision should reflect your passions and your priorities. Now define this vision clearly, like sketch it out, write it down, make a vision board, whatever works best for you, but just do something. All right, number two, which is to take a long-term approach. Now I'm gonna date myself here a little bit as an elder millennial, but you probably remember or have heard of the TV show Lost where everything was about the long game. Well, the principles apply here to finance as well. Now realize that your financial goals will take time to bloom like a tiny seed turning into a flower. Now think about where you want to be, let's say in five years financially. Maybe you wanna be debt free or have a specific amount saved for retirement or even that down payment. Now keep that end goal in sight, no matter how distant it might seem right now. Now this is especially important as we're all living through literally the worst round of inflation that we've seen in decades. All right, number three, which is to create the right foundation. Now given my opening statement, it's probably not a surprise that I'm into home and garden shows. So if you've ever seen Homes on Homes, the host Mike Holmes always emphasizes the importance of a solid foundation for any rent renovation project. So your financial journey also requires a firm foundation. Now this foundation comprises of financial habits and attitudes. So consider them like the soil that will help your financial plants ultimately grow. Now for instance, if you're planning to buy a house in the next five years, you'll need to assess your income and expenses really honestly. Now if your expenses are eating up majority of your income, leaving very little room for savings, it's time to make some changes here. So maybe it's cooking more at home instead of eating out, or perhaps it's time to explore that side hustle that you've been thinking about for years to boost your income. Okay, number four, which is to examine your attitudes and beliefs about money. So here's where things get a little bit more personal. Now let's talk about The Secret Life of Plants, the iconic documentary that proposed about how our attitudes can influence plants' growth. Well, think about your attitude towards your money as a sunlight for your financial garden. The right amount can help you grow, but too much or too little can either stunt your progress. Many of us inherit our beliefs about money from our families. Now, for instance, perhaps your parents were always stressed the importance of avoiding debt, much like avid gardeners would warn you about overwatering your plants, for example. Now, this advice isn't wrong or without merit, but as with watering plants, balance is key. All debt isn't necessarily bad, much like how sunlight isn't harmful to all plants. Now, some debts, when managed responsibly, can provide opportunities for growth. Mortgages, as an example, are a form of debt that can allow you to invest in a home that has the potential to appreciate over time. Now, it's like adding a tree to your garden that it might be a little bit of work up front, but over time, it can increase the overall value of your landscape. So remember, it's all about finding that right balance and making thoughtful decisions whether you're choosing a new plan for your garden or deciding on a new financial commitment. All right, number five, which is regular maintenance. Just like those painstaking renovation projects on shows like Property Brothers, financial growth requires regular and consistent work. You probably have noticed how they always break down large renovation tasks into smaller chunks. Well, use that same strategy 
strategy for your finances. Now, if you're in debt, start by organizing your debts and then choosing a payoff method. Consistently making payments and tracking your progress is like pulling weeds. It might not be the most fun task in the world, but it's absolutely necessary to keep your financial garden looking good and healthy. All right, so there you have it, folks. Embrace your newfound interest in gardening and channel that energy into tending your financial garden. If you appreciate the content that I've been creating, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button as it really does help out the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon and you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. I'm also gonna put my contact information at the end of this video. If you have topic suggestions or even questions about your own financial garden, please feel free to drop me a line. Until next time, please stay safe out there, you all. Bye for now.